Hi everyone, Eva here, three and a half years into my raw vegan journey and I have some secrets to share. They're not in any particular order and they are all from my own personal experience. One of the secrets I think to this lifestyle is that you will have doubts and you will have fears. And I think it's important to know that just because you're raw vegan, you're not just gonna you know, go full steam ahead. I know I've encountered a lot of doubts and a lot of fears through the years, especially as I, when I heard that someone had died that were raw vegan or when I heard of a long-term raw vegan no longer being a raw vegan going back to cooked food. I think these times have been very challenging for me because it's put a lot of fear and doubt and I've kept going and I've transcended those times, but I think it's important to know that just it's not just all, you know, unicorns and rainbows and full steam ahead. I think it's it's perfectly normal and okay to have to have challenges. Another little secret is that you might feel like an outcast. You might feel completely left out sometimes. Food is such an integral and big part of our culture that um, when you're no longer partaking into you know that that part of our culture, you feel like you feel like an outcast. You feel left out. And I think that's also okay to understand and to know that that can happen. Um, I think as time goes on, you feel less and less, but there's always that underlining little thing that you feel like you're missing out, especially in family gatherings or where a lot of people are sharing one particular food and commenting on how good it is. I think for me personally, I have felt left out. And, and, and I think it's okay to say that. I don't want to paint the picture that everything is perfect and rosy and this is the most amazing lifestyle because there are some challenges that go with it. Certainly not enough to make me want to stop, but enough to, you know, they're worth mentioning. You will feel a sense of grief and you will feel a, a sense of loss. And that is because like I mentioned, you go against societal norms. You are so far removed from what's considered normal. And um, I think that it's important to understand that you will, you will feel a sense of, of having lost something. And um, for myself personally, I went through a stage where I felt grief. And I think that's important to know too. I think it's important also to know that it takes a lot of guts and fearlessness and courage to, to go down this path and that to sometimes feel like you can't do it, it's normal. It's, I think that a lot of raw vegans paint this picture that they're superheroes and they, are, they never have a bad day. And I think it's a really big secret to let you into the fact that you have bad days like everyone else, you have fears, you have doubts and it's just, it's just part of the journey too. There are lots of raw vegans that aren't so. There's a lot of phonies in this community. And um, it's important to not place too much trust on one particular person, especially because they might let you down or because they're not truly 100% raw vegan. Having said that, I don't really think there's anyone out there that's 100% raw vegan. Maybe there are some, but if you use any sort of condiment or if you use some nuts, most of them are not really truly raw. If you use cashews, if you use you know, maple syrup or nutritional yeast, or there's just a lot of things out there that we use as raw vegans that aren't really raw. So it's, it's, it's important to know that 100% raw, it's really not attainable. Um, this is not so much of a secret, but we are all addicted to cooked food. This is mankind's biggest addiction, cooked food. And like everyone else, I, I was addicted to cooked food. I will always be addicted to cooked food. I've just chosen to transcend it somehow by going uh, raw vegan. But um, I think it's, it's a tricky thing because I will always be a cooked food addict. I am now sort of like in recovery <laughs> and uh, I'm choosing this path for one of those, th that's one of the reasons to sort of transcend the addiction and to see what's on the other side. But I think I will always be a cooked food addict. And um, yeah, that's a secret. That's not so much of a secret. We're all addicted to cooked food. Emotional eating has also been a huge tool for me until you know it and you, accept it and you work through it, you won't transcend it. And I think for me, emotional eating as well as cooked food addictions have been huge learning tools and they can also be for you. From high raw to 100% raw is a completely different planet. It's worth visiting, but it doesn't mean that everyone should live there. 
and I think that's not a secret that you hear from a lot. You don't hear a lot of Robigan saying, you know, don't, this is not for you. Do it. This is wonderful. This is an amazing lifestyle. Yes, all of that, but not everybody should be 100% raw vegan in my opinion. And there are some, you know, some, there are some people that for whatever reason really do much better on a high raw lifestyle. And I think it's, it's good to, to understand that if you're one of those people, don't beat yourself up because 100% raw veganism is not for you. If you have a huge family, if you travel a lot, if you're a social person, if you, you know, it just, your lifestyle has so much to do with it. In my particular case, it works, but it, I don't think it, it's for everyone. And I think that's, that's a secret that needs to be spoken more, more often by the, by the raw food gurus out there. You know, they make it sound as if everybody should be hundred percent raw vegan. I, I personally don't think so. Another little secret is that at the beginning, unless you eat enough calories, you will cheat. You will cheat if you don't get enough uh, fruit calories. However, you will not be in control of your cravings until you balance your fruit, your greens, and your fat. And this takes time. I know there's a popular book, The 80-10-10, and everybody's, you know, following this dogma as if that is the end-all be-all for everyone, and I personally don't believe so. I think it's much better to find a balanced approach. I think 80-10-10 works really well for some athletes and some people that are very active or some young people, but I don't personally think it's for everyone. And I think we're all different. And to, for you to find your ratio, it's also very important. Some people do very, very well on higher fat. Some people do very, very well with less fruit. Some people do very, very well with tons and tons of greens. And I think it's important to to let that secret out, you know, it's 80, 10, 10 is not for everyone. And I think it's very, very important that you find your way. Sometimes you will survive and sometimes you will thrive. And this is nothing to do with your circumstances. This is more to do with your mental state. You will have ups and you will have downs and this is perfectly normal and part of the process. And I think the surviving sometimes stage kicks in and you're just, is one foot in front of the other. And then sometimes you're just thriving and you're on a high. For this reason, a really big secret I think is to seek support from someone who understands, from someone who can relate. For most people, that's gonna be an online community. I have one friend that's a raw vegan and it's been so wonderful to, to be able to touch base with someone who's also going through what I'm going through. Um, not to say that you can't have friends that aren't raw vegans that won't be able to support you, but truly and honestly, it's just a secret language that we share. It's, it's when you're speaking to another raw vegan, they know what you know, they get it. It's like instant connection. And so I think it's very important that you seek community support. If it's online, if it's in person, whatever it is, but don't expect a normal person to get what you're going through because they're just not going to understand it. So I think, a really big secret that shouldn't really be a secret is to please get support. I would also have to say to choose raw one meal at a time, one day at a time, to say forever is very, very scary. And I think that it's so much easier to just say, and so much less scarier to just say, today I'm, I'm raw, this meal is raw, and then tonight I'm gonna have a raw meal. And then don't project too far into the future because that could be really, really scary. So instead, just do one meal at a time, one day at a time. Another big secret is that people put too much trust into this lifestyle. They think it's a panacea. And I think it's important to understand that it's, yes, it's the food, it's the sunshine, it's the nature, it's the exercise, it's your mental attitude. I mean, all of these things are, you know, they, they go together. It's not just the food. The food itself won't really heal you anyway. It's your body will heal itself if you just get out of its way. But having said that, I think it's very, very important to understand that your mental attitude is far and foremost the most important thing. I think without a good mental and positive attitude and good outlook on life and a good positive sort of, you know, that kind of personality or that kind of mental mental state, it doesn't really matter what you eat. I, I've met a couple of raw foodists that were so obsessive and so negative in some ways that I just thought that raw food is really not doing anything. <laughs> so I think it's good good to realize that it's not a panacea, that um, 
there are other components to a healthy lifestyle too. It takes a really long time to make a brand new body. You will crave what you're made of. And I think a really big secret is to not think that this is an overnight thing or it's a weeks long thing or even months long. I mean, I'm years in and I'm still undoing and unraveling and working. And right now I'm doing a fast. I'm doing a colon cleanse actually, the blessed herb colon cleanse. And uh, boy, <laughs> there's a lot of mucus flag in me still. And um, I'm detoxing like crazy and I'm almost four years this summer. So I think it's really, really important to, to understand that this is not an overnight sort of thing. It takes a long time to unravel, to unravel and to peel the layers of the onion. One thing I learned and I think is a really good secret is not to be perfect, not to try to be perfect, not to be too dogmatic. Just better what you did the day before. Just do a little bit better than you did yesterday. Maybe drink a little bit more water today. Maybe have a little bit more greens today. Maybe have you know, enough calories today if you didn't have enough calories. Just do better than the day before, but don't try to be perfect because it, there is no such a thing as perfection anyway. And I think that could really set you up for failure. So a really big secret is just do better than the day before and keep moving forward. Having said that, Having said that also, it's very important that you don't give up and that you understand that slip ups are normal and part of part of the journey. Um, you are born into the society. We're all conditioned to cook food. And I think it's, it's perfectly normal and understandable if you slip up. The important thing is what you do after that. Did you learn something from it? Did you journal about it? And are you gonna do better the next day? I heard someone say the other day um, that we weren't dropped in uh, slaughterhouse we were dropped in the Garden of Eden and this gave me pause this this sentence because yes that is I have so much faith into this lifestyle I have so much um, belief that this is the way for us to eat this is our species specific diet and having that faith really is a huge secret because without it I, I don't I don't think I could go on if I didn't really truly have faith I might not have all the studies to prove it. I might not have all the books and all the, you know, they might, this might not be mainstream. This might not be widely acceptable by a lot of people, widely accepted by a lot of people. And there's no long-term studies. Um, that doesn't matter. My faith is unshakable in this lifestyle. And I think it's, it's important to have that. That's probably one of the biggest secrets. If you don't have faith in the lifestyle, I don't think you're gonna be successful long-term. I think it's really, really important also to identify your challenges by journaling. And I don't even take my own advice on this one. I'm gonna start soon again journaling because I think it's huge. You can see a pattern sometimes. If you write things down, you can see the pattern and, and what went on and what happened and what led you to make certain choices. So another, probably my last secret is that, that keep a journal and keep writing things not just what you ate and how much you drank, but how you felt and what went on, your mental state, your dreams. And uh, keep a journal and see, see when you look back on it, how that might be super helpful to you. So that's it, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your um, comments below if you have any. I appreciate you subscribing and liking this video. I'm looking forward to making many more videos because I love to talk about this subject. This is my passion. This is my joy. This is what I'm here to do to to help in any way. So I thank you so much. I thank you for watching. Thank you.